with Ian Hazakostas, the World of Warcraft game director, sitting down once again to answer our Battle for Azeroth questions. We had a great deal of the usual going over questions to which we already knew the answer, but there were some surprises and some quite pleasant shocks in this time round. So let's get PvP out of the way first. There were a lot of questions about certain features, whether they would be live with the pre-expansion patch going out in mid-July. Now, those of us who have played through a number of expansions will, of course, know that all new expansion features go live at this time. We always get everything except the new content. But for the newer players, I suppose it was sensible to explain this. And one of the big new features for Battle for Azeroth is War Mode. So no surprise to veterans that this will also be live come the pre-expansion patch. What was more of a surprise, however, was that there are going to be some specific events in the pre-expansion patch intended to encourage us to try out War Mode. Details were sketchy, but it seems they really want us to try out the feature properly before making our decisions ahead of the Battle for Azeroth official launch. In addition, Blizzard also said they want the end of a PvP season to be more organised. They noted that trying to fit in two PvP seasons into one raid tier meant that the first season each time felt a bit weak in terms of the gear you obtained. They want to do away with this concept, but also to give much more warning on when the season would be ending. In the past, there's been a lot of second guessing on the end of a season, keeping dedicated PvP players in the dark until the end was announced with virtually imminent effect. In Battle for Azeroth, you should be getting much more notice. Now, from a raiding point of view, there was one massive shock that had me being both pleasantly and unpleasantly surprised at the same time. We had seen the achievements for Top 100 Alliance and Top 100 Horde Mythic raid completions some time ago. We imagined that this was part of the unannounced plan that Blizzard had to try and readdress the balance of Horde and Alliance raiding guilds. However, just a single achievement can only go so far. Well, it turns out they aren't going to expand this system to include other ranks, which was disappointing. But there were two pieces of news that will get a great many raiders quite excited. One is that there will indeed be, as suggested, a leaderboard on the website for these top 100 guilds for each faction. The second, and the real shock, is that once the top 100 leaderboards have been filled out for both Horde and Alliance, Mythic raiding will go cross-realm. That means that once 100 Alliance guilds kill Mythic Gahoon, and let's not kid ourselves that it won't happen some considerable time after the 100 Horde guilds have done so, then people will be able to raid Mythic Gahoon cross-realm. This means that guilds who take a little while to progress through Heroic, but then want to try Mythic but don't quite have the numbers, they'll be able to coordinate with a similar guild on any realm in the region, as long as it's of the same faction of course, and they can organise joint raiding into Mythic. This will be particularly good for such guilds on lower population realms. It also allows guilds to trial cross-realm for a week or two in the latter half of a raid. Now, although I'd known that the class buff project, which was argued for so passionately six months ago, was dead in the water some weeks ago, Blizzard have now officially announced it, saying that it was an experiment they've pulled back a bit from. Their argument was that it doesn't make a class feel special, when their original argument was that it is class buffs that will make each class feel special. A mantra that was dutifully repeated by all the Blizzard apologists and White Knights, who will now just as dutifully chant the new litany like a double speaking group straight out of 1984. But that isn't what was particularly surprising. The thing that surprised me was Ian Hazakosta saying that they'd given the few buffs that are making it in to the classes that didn't really bring anything to the group. You know, those classes that guilds never want in their roster like mages, warriors and priests. The real shock here was that he managed to say it with a straight face. Another piece of PvE news, and from Dungeons this time, we had seen with the latest beta build that it was no longer possible to swap gear in Mythic Plus. This was confirmed to be intended, and for once, Law was able to say, makes sense, and be right. Only, I'm not actually sure he said it this time. But I forget, maybe he did. This is very much about the Azerite traits. Being able to swap gear would allow you to swap traits between Trash Strong traits and Boss Strong traits. Blizzard wants us to decide on which set is best for what our greatest roadblock to success will be in the same way as we have in Legion for talents. Azerite traits are the pseudo-talent system for Battle for Azeroth and unlike the artifact traits for Legion, we have a choice as to which are active this time. I think it's also true to say, at least in my case, that the main reason for changing gear in Legion was to swap legendaries around. As we don't have the Legion legendary system, thank goodness, in Battle for Azeroth, this won't be needed anyway. 
it will just need people to remember to check their gear set as well as their talent before starting the dungeon. Unlike with talents however, there doesn't seem to be anything stopping you from changing gear around in other difficulties of the dungeon. It's specific to Mythic Plus. Finally, just another statement that was made regarding Mythic Plus, though not quite the same shock, was the tier-specific affix. We've known for some time that Fortified and Tyrannical are moving from level 10 right down to the bottom because of the massive gap this created between completing a plus 9 key and a plus 10 for many groups. The new plus 10 affix, which will be rewarding the best gear initially, as with Legion, will be one tied to the current raid. This affix will change as we progress the storyline in Battle for Azeroth. So the first one will be called Infested, which makes mobs more dangerous and resistant to crowd control. When the target's damaged, the parasite infected it jumps out to another mob, letting you kill that one. And the final shot, I suppose really, was that this was the first Q&A that they've done in 2018, which didn't have many players spitting feathers at their nonsense. With the exception of the complete about-face with their assessment of class buffs, the actual new information and clarifications will be universally appreciated, I think. Given that the real reason for these Q&As is for promotion of the upcoming content rather than genuine engagement, it wouldn't make sense to announce another raft of unpopular or at the very least divisive changes as they begin to try and get the hype train going for Battle for Azeroth. So, all in all, a more satisfying Q&A than we've had for a while and some interesting times coming. So what are your thoughts on the announcements? Are you a PvP player that's pleased you'll actually be able to put out the end of the season on the calendar? Are you a heroic to mythic raider whose guild will benefit from cross realm mythic raiding, albeit a little later into the raid? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos, share with others who may also be interested. And until next time, I'll see you later.